Hello YouTube, this is Morgan Airspeed Prime here with my next Avatar discussion video. In this one, I just want to do a sort of a general discussion on sort of, I suppose, just the the I suppose state of sort of where things are with Avatar and Korra at the moment. As we end 2020 going into 2021, you've already seen that I put out videos over the last month or two covering my, my typical end of year content, the top five story moments of this year, the 2020 Avatar year in review, and the 2021 preview video. And you'll, you'll probably recognize some of the points I'm making here that I made across those videos of, you know, the story content this year wasn't particularly great, especially on the Dark Horse comic side of things. Um, the year, sort of because of that, was a little bit of a mixed bag, completely saved by the fact that we had a novel this year. Um, and in regards to 2021, and, and also a factor of the news in 2020, um, it's kind of hard to judge exactly how 2021 is going to be. It looks incredible from a merchandise point of view, and news could go in the right direction, but it looks kind of weak on the news story content side of things. And a large part of the reason for that, and sort of that having to be sort of the opinion going into next year, given that it's Toph Beifong's Metal Bending Academy and like Suki alone basically as the, the books that we kind of know about, um, that doesn't look like the strongest lineup of books that we've ever had for Avatar in a year. The reason for that is just that we still don't know what's next for Korra comics. And so I suppose the, the, the title of this video probably is going to be something along the lines of where is the next Korra comic? Um, they have been teasing this announcement since March, nine months ago. Rachel Roberts, in an interview with Newsarama, specifically said fans of Avatar and Korra are going to be happy and excited about the content that they basically have uh, cooking up. That fits for the Avatar side of things, where they've announced a bunch of Avatar books. The only Korra stuff that has been announced since then has been the Legend of Korra Book 1 Air art book, second edition, and the deluxe edition to go along with that. To me, that is not something that like you can, I think, honestly say is this exciting announcement necessarily for Korra fans, and in, in terms of framing it in that way, that our lineup of books, this one Korra thing makes it exciting. So that immediately suggests that there was a lot more from Korra coming. Then we had the whole complete communication, uh, miscommunication from Dark Horse when it came to the way they announced the last Turf Wars live reading. They they overhyped it and made it sound like this was going to be the next Korra comic announcement. Didn't happen, and all they really had to say was, you know, stay tuned for an announcement. And that was months ago as well. Now we're, you know, just a day away pretty much from the end of the year, and we still don't really know when we're going to get this announcement. Uh, and the big question is, uh, okay, when is it actually going to come? Because this is going to be, you know, in a way, the centerpiece of content for next year. I know people are excited for Toph Beifong's Metal Bending Academy and Suki alone, but we also have to keep our expectations in check that they are still just the one-shot comics and they can only do so much with one book, with one part, sort of regardless of what story they do until they start to hit the big stories that they theoretically should be able to do in one-shots but they seem to not want to do. So the core comic, they have said it is a trilogy. Now, I don't know if we should, that if we're meant to interpret that as for sure that means it's going to be a trilogy in the same way that Turf Wars and Ruins of the Empire is because the one-shots are also one-shot trilogies with a theme. I don't think they're going to do uh, one-shots for Korra, though one-shots probably would actually help Korra and work for Korra more than they would for Avatar. Um, but I, I do think they should stick to the, the format where it is... Uh, three parts for a story. Uh, we're still so early in Korra comics, there's no way you could have possibly run out of ideas. But the question still remains, uh, Why? what's taking so long with this announcement? What, why haven't they uh, revealed anything yet? Um, what's the holdup? And, and a lot of this, I think, comes down to like so many of the details. Like, 
We don't know who the writer is, we don't know who the artist is, and we don't know the format, really, apart from the fact three books, they're, they're announcing three books whenever they announce it. Um, now, whether that be another core one-shots or the full-on trilogy format, like we expect, either way, like they, they still haven't said that yet. I, I, st I have confidence that it probably will be Mike as the writer. I think because this has now taken so long to announce, it's way past Mike leaving uh, the Netflix show. So if he has been working on Avatar, my guess is that it probably would have to be this. He wrote the first two Korra comics. It only makes sense that he would also write the third one. Um, now, that also asks the question, like, what does that mean for Brian, who also said he's working on Avatar? Um, I'm not exactly sure. Uh, is it just that he's going to do his usual sort of, you know, con consultation type role on the book? Hard to tell. But, you know, the it, it still just is, like, baffling to me that they've, they've taken so long to announce this and there's no information out there whatsoever hinting or anything like this. The artist is probably the other thing that if they have changed artists is probably the reason why it's taken so long. Um, we, we, we've seen this already with even the transition from Turf Wars into Runes of the Empire. That took quite a while. The transition from North and South into Imbalance took some time. Turf Wars took even longer because they originally had a different artist and they had to switch uh, and so on. I think everyone liked Michelle Wong's art and will be perfectly happy with her to continue. So there's no problem on that side of things in terms of feedback, my guess would be. But it, I feel we probably would have heard some sort of a tease that she was working on it. And then you also have to add in the way she's talked about her work on Rings of the Empire recently has been like, it was so cool to work on... Avatar and Korra as if she's not working on it anymore. It was a thing of the past. Um, the foreword for the uh, art uh, for the library edition of Runes of the Empire felt like that as well. So unless she's just really doing a good job of keeping it under wraps, we might be getting a new artist, which you know brings up a whole lot of other questions. You know, all of a sudden we have the the doubts that usually come in when we you know go from having a really really strong artist to having a new artist is always like what if this is the time it just really really doesn't work but they're usually good at choosing artists but who <laughs> what, what what is taking so long uh, I, I i like it and i do want it to be michelle wong again because i do think friends of the empire looks fantastic and i'd love to see uh even more progress as she does more and more books but I don't know, if you were just going to continue with the same creative team, I don't know why there's been such a delay. Um, because here's the thing when it comes to like the release date of this book. When they announce this, it's still going to be like six or seven months between the announcement and the book actually releasing. So immediately that says into stone, like, okay, the book is, one of the books at the very least, is going to come out this year. So you have to work backwards from sort of like the end of next year and like, okay, six, seven months, that means pretty much the latest possible they can announce this book is probably May. And entered in May for like a December release. That seems exceptionally late um, in terms of like all of a sudden like you have huge gaps in your release schedule. Now, again, at that point we're getting into uh, what's next for Avatar comics as well because again Suki alone is wrapping up the first trilogy of Avatar one shots and they haven't said what's next after that. Again Peter Wartman and Faith Aaron Hicks are they going to continue to do the so second trilogy of one shots? Are we going to continue to do one shots even though Mike and Brian I suppose whatever they said about you know their new sandbox style approach does that need to be kept now that things are in a different uh, position now? So many questions, but again, we're, we're talking about the core comic mainly. The, the, the other thing with this is, this announcement has to go right. Like it, It's one thing that we just get the announcement. Finally, we know what's next. The story has to be one that I think we care about. It's been long enough now, and especially with 
the decision they've made to switch the Avatar comics over to one shots. This it puts all the pressure on this core comic to show that the comics are still willing to tell important stories. Runes of the Empire showed us that, that with Kubira they are willing to develop characters in big ways. But again, that book came out in February, it has been a while, it's going to be over a year until we see released the next core comic. Um, I, I, I feel they will, just because like we're such a short way into the Korra comic timeline. You have to do something of note next. But I think the worst thing that they could do is probably set the book just in Republic City again and have it just be, we're still dealing with stuff in Republic City and we're focusing heavily in on this. That's not what I think people want. We, we want to see the bits of the world we didn't get to see in Korra, which is why I think everyone who talks about this talks about, do the Fire Nation story. Please go to visit the Fire Nation. The reason for that, of course, is that Zuko is there. Everyone likes to see more of Zuko. This would allow Izumi to be in the, the plot a little bit more, and I suppose get to stand out as a character more than she actually did. We might finally get the legendary, mythical, you know, daughter of Izumi character, the princess, introduced at last, which is would be cool just to see a new character of importance introduced. It might allow Iroh to play a role. Uh, again, he was sort of not massively used in the series after book one. Um, just all of those things, there's a few kind of questions you might be able to answer about just the, the Fire Nation in this era. Just seeing what it looks like. How much of an effect has the end of the war had on the Fire Nation as they've transitioned from very much this sort of propaganda-driven thing of like Sozin and the Fire Lords are the, the be-all, end-all. The, the history starts with Sozin. Now all of a sudden, the history books for the last like hundred years have been wrong let's get the correct history in here. Like, how has that actually affected things? Um, I, I'd, I'd like to see some of that. And, you know, uh, the question is, like, what's the reason why the characters would need to go there? I think that's one of those things where, like, come up with any reason. Some sort of a threat, spiritual threat. There's just so many ways that you can actually do this. But the core, I think, should more be on the characters. That's what I would like to see. If you do feel you have to set it in Republic City, then what I would actually do is not really focus that much on Korra, but instead actually probably have the Air Noma characters be the, the uh, forefront of the story in focusing on what they are doing now that they're in control of the portal. Uh, what are they doing to help people like learn to be more spiritual, helping people interact with the spirits? What's their approach now that they have this sort of you know, sort of important position within the city addressing, you know, something like that new new sphere portal. That would, I think, be cool because it would allow Tenzin, you know, Opal, Janora, Iki, Milo, Kai, the airbender characters to be much more in the spotlight and interacting with, you know, the just general population of Republic City and seeing more how people view sort of spirituality now that it's like right there in front of them, not just something you can really only get to if you go to the North or South Pole. It's right here in the middle of this big city. That is the way to do things. The last thing they need to do is do anything related to, I think, like triads and like Turf war st t style stuff. Absolutely not. And that's why I do feel you have to be more focused on some of the other nations rather than like specifically on Republic City because I think it's fair to say like we, we got a lot of Republic City in Korra itself and with Turf Wars and um, I don't really think you you need to return to it all that soon to me Republic City is probably where you can set a lot of short story stuff if they ever get around to doing Korra short stories uh, I, I don't think the immediate next thing you need to do is that similarly I personally would not make the decision to have this next, this third book, be the book to bring back Tokuga. As much as they, they've set up that he'll probably return at some point, I, I don't think that is something that you need to do now. 
I'm sure they can do a decent job on Tokuga and turn him into an actually interesting character because he was um, a little bit just there as part of the book, threatening to a degree, but there wasn't much character to him. And that's what was the, the ultimate problem with the general plot of Turf Wars is just that he wasn't that much of a villain. He was just this like jet clone who they suddenly gave leadership of like all of the triads to then he got spirit morphed and he just was in charge because of that they didn't really go particularly in depth into the spirit morphing and what exactly it did to him um, and while he seemed more powerful afterwards it was very much just the I'm gonna take over the city I'm gonna threaten people you know typical villain stuff nothing of particular interest I think with the character and, and that's where like improvements w would need to be made um, and I, I, th I think that that's probably one thing you would maybe say about the Avatar comics as well is it's been a while perhaps since we've had a properly good like villain in one of the comics in that I'd like to see maybe the Korra comics be ones to introduce like an ongoing new kind of threat that might take a couple of series to get around to resolving um, rather than what they tend to do which is new villain for this trilogy. And the trilogies as, as much as they're good and stuff like that they're only like I'd say the equivalent of like maybe four or five episodes if even that. So kind of half a season type thing of a Korra. Um, I'd like to see them introduce a villain who is more of a kind of one or two season long villain. Um, and I'd see how that goes. Because that sort of ongoing storytelling is something I think we haven't quite seen enough of in the comics. Just across both Avatar and Korra. Um, and, and Korra probably leaves you a little bit more ground to do something like that. Because you don't have this locked in situation where like by default with Avatar certain things sort of can't happen because otherwise it would have been massive history that we should have known about before. But with Korra you can introduce another villain that is potentially more powerful than a villain from one of the books or someone who's just as notable as one of them because we don't know anything about the future of Korra um, and, and that's what's so overall unique and interesting about it. Um, I suppose another point would just be um, if they were to do more of an airbender focus plot I suppose what you would have Korra do I, I would have it be her and Janora being the ones to try and negotiate with the spirits I, I think it's about time to finally address this pl plot properly and have the spirits and humans actually talk about things uh, in a proper way not just the spirits coming in to blame humans for everything and act like they're the best things ever I'm a, I'm a little tired of that I'm a little tired of that dragon spirit just talking for all spirits and no one you know standing up or anything like that that all spirits apparently have the exact same opinion on things and they've done nothing wrong I, I, I think it's a little uh, unbalanced the way that they've attempted to do that sort of development so far so that needs to improve um, and I think what you probably need to do is reintroduce potentially other spirits that are older potentially ones who knew one in the past or, or something along those lines like maybe reintroduce Wan Shi Tong and have him be a central spirit uh, figure of like addressing that he kind of went a bit rogue as a spirit in terms of joining Unalak and you know his reasons for doing that how he feels about things now that that's a character who could theoretically be a proper leader for the spirits and an ancient knowledge spirit who you know you can understand to a degree maybe why he would be a representative of the spirits as opposed to this dragon eel spirit thing who was just introduced because he talks and no one else talks um, that that's the the main problem I've had with it so far it's just it's, it's been a very basic exploration of the human spirit conflict the conflict that is the main thing Korra I suppose has to deal with as the avatar given that for the most part a lot of the issues that she's dealing with now have been resolved 
yes, she's going to want to help with the stabilizing the Earth Kingdom as they continue their slow progress towards democracy. But I think that's on hold for a little bit. I don't think we're going to jump straight back into the main world building plot being um, the, the elections in the Earth Kingdom again. We just covered that. Will they have this book be a direct follow-up to Runes of the Empire and focus more on Kuvira, on Su, on Batar? I think about the best I, I'm going to hope for from the third book is that we at least look in on where Kuvira is uh, and what progress has been made. And, and, and I say that because I don't want us to get into a situation like the current Avatar comics where some of the comics have clearly set up arcs for characters that seemingly there is no intent to return to. And of course I'm talking about Azula here. Like, Avatar, Azula in the Avatar comics, like, at this point, like, I, I, I'm, I'm sick and tired of talking about it. It's so obvious that this is what they should do. But now they've purposefully almost said in announcing this new sandbox-style approach is like, yeah, we're not going to cover Azula. I'm like that okay um so like unless they announce like the next avatar one shot to be an azula one to cover some of the gaps in her story i have very little confidence that 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 we're going to return to that so i actually wouldn't mind too much if this was almost a direct sequel to, to runes of the empire because i'd rather they as quick as possible attempt to address an open plot point rather than putting it on hold because I don't have a lot of confidence that they will return to things they've put on hold. And um, Azula being the, the main piece of evidence there, of course, the the May and Zuko relationship that has been on hold since like 2012. Um, it's that absurd stuff that we're approaching 10 years of May and Zuko being broken up with no progress made since then. Um, that sort of stuff is the sort of stuff I'm, I'm really sick and tired of. Um, that I've made so many videos about, the, about it in the past and still no movement all these years later. Um, so they, they definitely need to you know, get on that. I've said it many times before. Like the, the, the characters in the core cast who need development are Mako and Asami. Probably Asami more so than Mako just because... I think just even from the show itself, Asami really only has like the book one stuff as I suppose her main character arc and she's just kind of in the other seasons. Yes, the return of her father gave her a lot to do in book four, but that's really it. That's her arc in Korra itself is her and her father. I still want to see more development of her within the Korra uh, Asami relationship. I still want to see more of her character itself. See some emotions out of her. See what her flaws are. We've very much done the thing with their relationship where we've got across Korra has these flaws. Korra is this developed characters. And a lot of the minor issues we presented with their dynamic has been, oh, Asami's a little bit uncomfortable because Korra's doing this, but nothing in the reverse, and, and, and they definitely need to do that. With Mako, it's purely a case of, I think the character hasn't been just treated all that well since about, like, his, um, his being proved right arc in book two. They haven't quite ever kind of returned to, you know, treating the character the way he sort of needs to be treated in my mind. So I'd like to see him, you know, get that, you know, focus again and just, you know, acknowledge. Like, it, it feels like he is being set up to be the next chief of police. Um, you'd like to see more on that side of things. Um, maybe, maybe finally give him an actual romance that they aren't just going to turn around and, like, criticize the character for. Um, that's what we want to see, just, like, not doing what you've done with him for, like, the last little while. Um, Bo Lin, of course, you still have the arc of just him not really knowing what to do, and that's something that I guess is going to continue on. Still not really sure where they're going with it, but you know, they'll, they'll do something with it, I suppose, eventually. But Bo Lin, like, has had a lot of development. Korra has had a lot of development. Tenzin, a lot of development. It's the other characters who sort of need it more than anything. Which is why I say I kind of probably would prefer the next book to be a little bit more focused on the other characters. 
Korra, I suppose, is going to have to be involved, of course, in that even the Avatar comics have always tended to include Aang, except for a few specific occasions. But, you know, um, if you go to the Fire Nation, I, I don't really have a problem if you maybe have like Mako and Bolin sort of be more of the main cast there. That you have Korra be there more in a Avatar speaking to a, to the Fire Lord sort of perspective. Um, but most of the plot actually is about Mako interacting with the princess or, you know, Mako and Bolin exploring the Fire Nation connecting to their mother's side of the family. That That's a cool plot to me. Um, and it's just, you know... All of this is basically just to say, it's important when they finally announce the next core comic, what the story actually is about. That, you know, it shouldn't just be this thing where like we just accept it regardless, you know, cool, finally you announced it, great. No, it matters what the story is. Like it can still be disappointing even after finally getting the announcement we've waited for. If it's not a story we're particularly interested in, um, in that, like, I, I remember when Imbalance was announced, I had the reaction of, like, I don't really have a lot of faith that this is going to do all that much. And it was proven correct with regards to when the book actually came out. It, it didn't really move things along all that much. So there was an example of just, like, from the get-go, kind of me knowing immediately, yeah, that's the way this book is going to pan out. I want to be excited. I, that, that's the main thing I've said a bunch of times over this year is when they make this core comic announcement I want it to excite me as a fan I want to be like yes I'm so excited for part one because I can't wait for them to cover this for this character to get exploration ex exploration in relation to this I don't think we've really had that in a while I think the Suki comic presented a little bit of that but mainly from the perspective of just you know hashtag where is Suki her not quite getting the respect she needs despite having more or less I think for pretty much most of the fans transition to now she is one of the main cast but not being treated that way by the creative side of things and um, so finally this book her centerpiece on the cover getting a book of her own was this kind of big moment of like finally the respect the character deserves um, and and there was excitement because of that I still think there's going to be a sort of scoping problem with that book of it probably isn't going to be big enough to develop Suki as much as we perhaps want. But with a Korra three-part comic, if they do it that way, you do have that ability to do something kind of big. Um, so, yeah, the, 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 that's I think most of what I wanted to talk about here is just that I, I am a little bit worried going into the next year with regards to Avatar content on the channel about just exactly how much content there's going to be for me to cover sort of until they get to these announcements because without a novel next year and all, most of the Avatar comics being one-shots, all of a sudden it sort of removes most speculation videos out of the picture until we get like actual more material of like you know preview content. And it means like I, there's not a lot I can do in terms of discussion un until things actually get announced. Um, so that's why I, I, in terms of this video, I wanted to do an Avatar video before the end of the year. I'm just kind of thinking like, what should I do it on? And this is the thing I want to talk about when I think of Avatar over the last couple of weeks is why haven't we got this announcement yet? What is holding everything up? After the success of Avatar on Netflix this year, of Korra on Netflix this year, why has everything ground to a halt in, on this side of things? And this is just, you know, you know, making a comic, which is typically only done between a handful of people. I, I don't really think COVID kind of should have too much of an effect on exactly how this works, because again, the creative team on the comic is is pretty light and a lot of it is mainly done by the writer plus the artist um, and and a lot of just editing afterwards where, where, where is is a lot of this going on why, why have we been left waiting for this I don't really have any predictions on when the book is actually going to come out because I've probably predicted every month this year 
for the announcement based on how things have gone. Um, like I said, May is going to be the absolute latest they can do it for the book to actually come out this year. Um, but my expectation would be that realistically they have to announce it within either January or February. If they if they wait after that, I think I'm just like we're so behind. Like we're we're just like we've lost a year of comics effectively just because of um, you know I, I I don't get it. Like I I I I don't get on the scheduling side of things. Like what exactly has happened here? Why there's such a massive delay? But you know it th that's the way it is. I I think like I said. January, February for, I guess, a August, September, or October release for the first part. That would be my guess. Um, I, I think, like I said in my 2021 preview, I think we're going to see for sure one part of the next core comic, depending on if it's, if it's an intro, like really early, then perhaps the second book could also slip into the year, but um, I, I, I have my doubts. So, there are my thoughts on this, on, on I suppose what was a kind of core comic just sort of discussion speculation video uh, in the comments let me know what your thoughts are both on one like where is the next core comic why haven't they announced it yet what are your thoughts on what is the creative team going to be new writer new artist what is it going to be a turf wars runes of the empire style trilogy or a one-shot trilogy and i suppose most importantly what do you think the book's actually going to be about so there's a bit of a core comic speculation, which is the main thing on my mind with regards to Avatar at this point, while I'm just waiting for a lot of the, the stuff I've ordered to arrive, basically, which is why you haven't seen reviews for action figures and statues and stuff like that. Just waiting on stuff. Um, so, yeah, there, there's been the video in the comments. Let me know what your thoughts are, but that has been the video. Thanks for watching, and bye.